the concept of Vaishadeva Kudubakam, which our Vice President Swami Yagavich always embraced so passionately, I think is, is, uh, is fundamental to the entire world. Right? We're all brothers and sisters on this planet. Uh, uh, I'm president of the World Constitution and Parliament Association uh, that supports the Constitution for the Federation of Earth. And I was, I was asked by the organizers of this conference to, to talk about the Sustainable Development Goals under the title Deep Sustainability. Uh, may, I, may I ask, uh, I have 15 minutes, is that correct? In, uh, my time frame is 15 minutes. Miss Moderator, uh, could you clear that, clarify yes, that for me? Yes, you are correct. There is 15 minutes. Oh, okay, thank you. I just want to make sure. Uh, <coughs> so the the uh, United Nations in the year 2015, 193 nations sign the Sustainable Development Goal document. It's called Transforming Our World. And this document uh, uh, has 17 main goals and 169 specialized targets beneath those goals. Uh, and the goals, uh, of course, are very, many of these goals are very important because they articulate uh, what must be done if we're going to survive on this planet, if we're going to face climate crisis. And climate crisis uh, is everywhere. It's in the super storms that we're experiencing, like the horrible one that the bank that destroyed a bunch of southern Bangladesh last year. It, it's in the heating of the planet, the heating of the oceans, the dying of the fisheries in the oceans. Uh, the, uh, the drying up of the climate so that the rains uh, and the monsoons are entirely uh, changed and people experience terrible droughts. Crop will not grow. And uh, so we, we as a planet are facing this terrible crisis and we must collectively deal with this crisis. Uh, and the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations uh, give us these, uh, they, they understand that it must be an integrated package, right? So the 17 goals, no poverty, no hunger, good health and well-being for everybody, education for everybody, including women and girls, uh, gender equality, uh, clean water for everybody, affordable energy, decent work and economic growth for everybody, uh, industry innovation and infrastructure, uh, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action uh, for uh, protecting the climate, life below water, protecting the the wetlands and the waters, life on land, protecting uh, the ecology of, of uh, the land, uh, 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 all the uh, uh, forests of the world, and the, uh, all the ways that the land supports human life and the other animal life on the land. Uh, number 16, peace and strong justice institutions, and number 17, Goal number 17, partnerships to achieve this goal. So it sounds very wonderful, it sounds idealistic on the surface of it. But there, if one studies these goals, these documents, it's very problematic. Right? It's problematic because they assume that we've got to transform the world in all these ways that I have just outlined, that they 17 uh, goals. We've got to transform the world, but the United Nations system that is presupposed there is the old world system that goes back three to four hundred years. Right? The system uh, in 1648 at the Peace of Westphalia in Germany. 
they, scholars say they first outlined the system of sovereign independent nation states. And today we have some 393 sovereign independent nation states, most of them militarized, a number of them with nuclear weapons, many of them spending billions of dollars, billions of dollars on defense and upgrading their, there's perpetually an arms race going on, right? So it ignores sovereign independent nations. A sovereign, what is a sovereign nation? A sovereign nation is, is a, a person, is a nation that does not recognize any effective binding laws above itself. That's what the word sovereign means. And so the, uh, the, the SDG document presupposes that. Item 18 in this, uh, uh, in this document, item 18 states that we affirm that every state has and shall freely exercise full permanent sovereignty over all of its wealth, natural resources, and economic activity. We will implement the agenda for the full benefit of today's generation and future generations. Well, so here they're talking about implementing the sustainable development goals for future generations, apparently for the whole world, but in the context that each nation has full permanent sovereignty over all of its internal economic activity, its resources, everything that falls within its sovereign bond boundaries. Think of the implications of this. Astonishing implications. We all know, for example, that Brazil, this giant country in South America, uh, is uh, host to the lungs of the earth. Those rainforests, those giant rainforests, which are also partly in, in Venezuela and Ecuador, uh, they're mainly in Brazil. And uh, these sovereign nations, according to the SDG documents, have autonomy over the lungs of the earth because those rainforests produce close to 50% of all the oxygen that oxygenates the world and uh, uh, modifies the, the uh, water movement of the world, the clouds of the movement, the clouds of the world, and so on. They're essential to the entire ecosystem of the planet, and yet they're the private property of Brazil. And right now, if you read the newspaper, everybody knows that Brazil is busy cutting down the lungs of the earth. They're busy destroying those lungs for development purposes. Right? And there's a uh, giant project called the Tapos River Dam Project that, that they're talking about, which will flood a thousand acres of rainforest in order to commercially develop the lungs of the earth. So this is the problem that we face and that the sustainable uh, development uh, Goals document faces. They want transformation of our earth and cooperation of everybody for preserving the planetary ecosystem. And they don't want to change that system of sovereign independent nations recognizing no effective law above themselves, which means under that system that Brazil has the legal right to destroy the lungs of the earth. Right. As, you, as you know, uh, when President Trump became elected in 2016 in the United States, uh, he withdrew the United States from the Paris Climate Agreement. The United States withdrew. The United States is a sovereign nation. It has the legal right to withdraw from that. China produces much of the uh, carbon dioxide that pours into the atmosphere because China has been industrializing so rapidly over the last several decades, right? 
under the United States, under the UN Sustainable Development assumptions, China has the legal right to pollute the atmosphere above its territory. Right? Even though that atmosphere, of course, circulates around the entire planet and contributes to the global warming climate collapse problem. Right? This is the system, the system of sovereign nations, militarized sovereign nations. Right? So the world collectively spends some uh, $1.8 trillion, $1.8 trillion a year, U.S. dollars a year, in weapons and war. Almost 50% of that by the United States alone, but the massive uh, expenditures, uh, India and Pakistan on their nuclear weapons programs, China and Russia, huge uh, military uh, uh, endeavors and so on. This money, right, not only is militarism extremely destructive of the environment, producing all kinds of toxic chemicals and waste in the production of these bombs, and if they're used and when they're used, unbelievable destruction of the environments where they're used, uh, nevertheless, the Sustainable Development Goals document does not mention militarism. Right. Item 16 is the only place where peace is, is mentioned, and item 16 talks about internal peace. It says every nation must have uh, peace within itself and strong justice institutions. Right. So here you have the Sustainable Development documents recognizing that we're in a planetary climate crisis. One, but you, you cannot solve this climate crisis, they say, uh, um, unless we keep the sovereign nation system so that every nation has the right to destroy, if it wants, to destroy the environment within its borders. Right? Two, it entirely ignores world uh, militarism which is very destructive of the environment and uh, wastes 1.8 trillion U.S. dollars a year that should be used to create a sustainable, healthy environment. We need to regenerate the soils of the planet. We need to restore them. Uh, in India, I visited projects, excellent uh, sustainability projects, local projects, where the people are working to uh, for example, one project near Nagpur, where, uh, where every single drop of water that falls on these several acres of land is, is preserved. The water does not run off. They've got it uh, uh, um, modulated so that every drop of water goes to feed the trees and the plants and so on in a sustainable situation. Right? That, that, that's excellent work. At the local level, we need that planet wide, and it cannot be done if we're spending $1.8 trillion on militarism. So, one other thing that the, uh, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals document entirely ignores is population explosion. Right? The world population has quadrupled. Right? When I was in high school in 1962, we had 3 billion people on the planet. Right? Uh, earlier that century, it was 1 billion. Right? So we went to, from 1 billion people to 3 billion people. And even then, in the 1960s, people were talking about the, the population explosion. Every single person on the earth requires food, clothing, shelter, resources. Every single person on the earth pollutes, right? It has waste products, generates waste and so on, it uses energy, and uh, this energy dissipates into the environment. And the Sustainable Development document, uh, a, a, a document of some 15,000 words, uses the word population only five times, and each time in an innocuous context. The, the, you know, the population of girls in the country or something like that. 
never talks about the Fibrillation Explosion. So here you have a, a document that claims that we need to be committed to transforming our world, ending poverty, ending hunger, uh, good education, quality in life for everybody, in a sustainable uh, context. And yet it ignores the fact that every year about 80 million new people appear on the planet. Every single year, another group of people, 80 million, about the size of Mexico. It's like adding another Mexico onto the surface of this limited planet every year. And so while the, the, agricultural, the land, agricultural ability of the land on our planet continues to decline, and the fisheries continue to decline, and the general environment is no longer hospitable for growing food, we're adding a, another 80 million people a year to the planet. How are we possibly going to achieve these goals by the year 2030 when we're doing that? And yet the document completely ignores the need to control the planet population. Okay, so let me just sum up then uh, what I'm saying, that uh, that uh, I am president, as I mentioned before, of the World Constitutional Parliament Association. We support the Constitution for the Federation of Earth. Right? Jagdish Gandhi at the City Montessori School uh, with his Chief Justice's conference supports, he's one of our vice presidents, he supports a world federal authority that, that would be capable of of addressing the climate crisis as we really face it. A world federal authority that would recognize by Shadaya Bakudu Bakum that all people are brothers and sisters. That's what the Constitution for the Federation of Earth does. The Constitution for the Federation of Earth, written by hundreds of world citizens working together and finished in 1991, is that is a document that unites people and it makes the essential resources of the planet the responsibility of the government, the democratic government of the planet, the world parliament, so that Brazil no longer has a right to destroy the lungs of the earth. No country like the United States has a right to withdraw from climate uh, uh, endeavors. No country like China has a right to industrialize regardless of it's the amount of CO2 it puts into the atmosphere. This is the only way, in my view, right, and in the view of the many people who support the Earth Constitution, this is the only way that we will achieve sustainability on this planet. Right? If we unite, if we ratify this Constitution and unite, and the reason why I come to India every year is because India, with its wonderful traditions, right, Sri Aurobindo and World Union, its, its vision of Vaishadaya Kudumbakam, the, uh, the unity of humankind, and its powerful political position in the world in which it never was part of the Cold War between the West and the East. It was always a leader of the non-aligned state uh, nations. Uh, for these reasons, I believe that India is a key place for holding the next session of the Provisional World Parliament, which is scheduled for New Delhi in December of this year. Right? New Delhi in December of this year, in which the, under the authority of the Earth Constitution, we will be moving forward uh, the project of world unity. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop there. I think my, I believe my 15 minutes is, is up, and I very much appreciate the opportunity to talk with you and the invitation uh, from Dr. Singh and so on. And uh, uh, may God bless this conference. May God bless our endeavors uh, for, to create unity on planet Earth. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.
we are over at 12 for bio presence in this seminar. So thank you for connecting with us. So now I would like to invite our next speaker, Dr. Mamta Mani Tripathi, Associate Professor, Political Science, Buddha Post Graduate College, Kushinagar. She is going to talk on the topic Antyodaya. So Dr. M. M. Tripathi Ji, are you there? Please unmute. बात 
मटेरियल मनी मशीन मैनेजमेंट मोटिव एंड मार्केट और इनके बीच योग्य संतुलन बना करके ही हम उचित विकास कर सकते हैं विकास के आयातित सिद्धांतों की आलोचना में पंडित दीनदयाल उपाध्याय के विचार उल्लेखनीय है उन्होंने भारतीय अर्थनीति विकास की दिशा नामक अपनी पुस्तक में कहा कि स्वतंत्रता के बाद हमारे जितने भी प्रश्न है उसमें बहुत अंतर आया है और हम प्रत्येक प्रश्न को आर्थिक दृष्टिकोण से देखते हैं दीनदयाल उपाध्याय नेहरू के विकास के मॉडल में सामर्थ नहीं थे समाजवाद साम्यवाद पूंजीवाद की विचारधारा को एक आंकी मार्ग के खारिज करते हुए पंडित दीनदयाल उपाध्याय ने भारतीयता की जिस विकासवादी दृष्टिकोण को अपने सिद्धांतों में प्रतिपादित किया है प्रधानमंत्री के न्यू इंडिया के तय लक्ष्य उसी विकासवादी